Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from WX Risk, located here in Central Virginia, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and a lot to talk about here. Um, on our topics here, we'll uh, show you, uh, let me get over to here, obviously we're going to be talking about Saturday, February 1st. And we're also going to be talking about the fire hose pattern and then maybe February 6th or 9th. So those are the three topics we'll be covering this day presentation. There's a picture of my smiling face from Richmond, Virginia. And uh, uh, you can see again, I never got around to fixing that. Can you believe that? Anyway, uh, there you go. Um, there I am almost approaching 300,000 likes now. So and there's my uh, Verizon Gmail and uh, there's the uh, Twitter account. And there's the uh, Facebook page. There's the, uh, obviously the Twitter page right there. And this is the Snowstorm page. Don't forget, this gets updated every few days. Another updated edition of this coming out tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. And let's get right to it and see what it's got. Now, this here's the overall pattern as of uh, over the last seven days. In fact, let me change this map for just one sec. Okay. I put in a better map here so we can see more what's going on in a bit more detail. So let's, let's take a look at a couple of features here. Obviously, with this big closed low here over Texas, bringing significant rain there. Um, there's our trough here off the East Coast, bringing in the after yesterday's rain, the cool air, cool well, sort of air. There's our little block right here, positive anomaly. It doesn't really count as a negative NEO, but it is a block of some type. And then here's our very strong Pacific jet. Look at this big upper low here, this big right here over Alaska and then we have this ridge here so what's happening is look at all these lines look how compacted they are you see this all these lines how tight they are that represents of course very strong winds here when the winds are being squashed so it's like a funnel and these two points are trying to close down and it's causing the Pacific jet to get very strong so the ridge is pushing this way and this trough is pushing that way and it's forcing this to get very 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 strong and we'll see that in just a minute and that's a real problem with the forecast pattern now, the, here we have to take a look at the actual surface map and the evening radar. So there's our uh, closed, there's our 500 low here, and the surface low, uh, there it is right over the Texas-Oklahoma border. And we can see pretty good snow here over portions of Kansas, southwest Missouri, and then rain over southeastern uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, into the Delta area there. And then there's a little bit of snow extending up to Iowa and the eastern Dakotas and southwest Minnesota, not much there. Okay, so that's the current situation as of right now. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is that before we get into the Friday syst uh, Saturday system, there is a little disturbance showing up in the afternoon models here over West Virginia into the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, you can see this on Thursday morning. Uh, the upper left is the uh, three kilometer NAM uh, right here. You can see that. And then uh, this is the uh, GFS right here. And you can see it also has rain and snow going in. Now, this is still early. Um, uh, this is not associated with any big, strong upper level or closed feature. Um, it's a mid-level disturbance to bring in the snow. So I would not be surprised if the snow here falls apart as it crosses the mountains of West Virginia and moves into the Shenandoah Valley. It might not. It might hold together. But, you know, expect this to be downplayed. Usually, most of the time, 80, 90 percent of the time, these sorts of systems fall apart when they cross the uh, Appalachian Mountains. All right. Briefly, our MJO, as you can see, uh, you can see what it's doing here. It is right there. Boom. Uh, that's where it started. If we look at the last uh, update here for the 27th, it was uh, right there. That's what ended. So as you can see, began in the neutral circle, came out, came back in the neutral circle. So that's where it is right now. And most of the models keep it there. You can see this is the European week. Uh, operational the European monthly model and they keep it in the neutral circle so the MJO is not a factor here for the next week or two not at all taking a look at our teleconnections this here is of course from um, ESRL uh, and you can see this is the uh, the old uh, MRF GFS uh, uh, reforecast um, and what they do here in this, in case you don't know, they take the old GFS model and the and the old MRF model, for that matter, and they base it off the uh, hunt, you know decades of climatology and uh, their you know their teleconnections or pattern recognition. It's a more coarse uh, uh, way of uh, figuring out the pattern, but it also has some value. So. And you can see that uh, the PNA here, uh, right now it's positive, but it's going to go negative as the trough moves back to the west coast. You can see it very closely, and it goes strongly negative down here. The NAO is very close to neutral, minor going through minor adjustments. The EPO is positive, 
and then it goes negative here which is you know you don't want to see this for snowstorms on the east coast you want this to be negative so that's not good and the pna which is okay now after the february 1st it goes negative so we don't have a lot going for us here in the teleconnections another way of looking at it is, of course you can get it from uh, places like weather models or weather bell these different teleconnection graphs and you can see um, that the uh, arctic oscillation right here this is the arctic oscillation it's a uh, it's positive and it briefly dips negative here uh, early uh or around february 3rd or 4th neutral i should say and then it goes positive again so that's really not what you want to see at all the nao is weakly positive and it goes neutral and then again it's positive again so uh, there's this little bit of weakening here and here around, around February 3rd or 4th, and then both of those go generally positive again. On the Pacific side, here's the uh, Eastern Pacific Oscillation. That is to say when the ridge goes up into Alaska. And again, we want it to be negative, and you can see it's strongly positive, then it goes neutral, and then it's positive again, and maybe a little negative towards the end. And the e, uh, PNA pattern, this is the original West Coast. It's positive now, and then it goes neutral to really negative the rest of the way and you don't want to see that so none of these teleconnections are really working out for us in terms of seeing the big signal for an east coast snowstorm so there's that All right now this was the gfs here from this morning so let's take a look at this, this is the early uh, tuesday morning gfs you can see the low coming off the coast and then it uh, really intensifies very nicely here on saturday afternoon you've got heavy snow in eastern pennsylvania uh, rain and snow in New York City, heavy snow interior uh, northern New Jersey, and then significant snow in southern New York State and southern New England. And obviously we would have a significant rain here, even all of the lower mid-Atlantic, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, just all the rain there. All right, and then finally what it does is it does this, it goes boom off of Long Island, and there's near blizzard conditions or extremely heavy snow in eastern New England, all the way back into New York City and northeastern Pennsylvania and into eastern and southeastern interior New York State. That was the zero Z GFS this morning, Tuesday morning, okay? So let's look why the GFS is doing that. Let's just the upper air map here. These represent the vorticity maximums, our pieces of energy. There, there's one of them. This is the southern piece here. So there's our southern jet stream. See that? And here's the northern jet stream. And there's that northern piece of energy. See that right there? And it goes like this. So what's going to happen is these two fist, fist features are going to merge and, and phase. And so that's early Friday morning. And then we can see what happens during the day on Friday. This is now Friday night. So what's happened is the southern piece of energy kind of splits. A little piece goes back here, but there's another piece is here. And here comes a northern piece coming in like this. You see how they're going to phase? They're going to merge right here. And you can see this is now by uh, Saturday, midday, we have uh, the southern piece of energy there and the northern piece is over Chicago. And look at the trough axis. You see how it's negatively tilted? Okay, that's always a sign that the coastal storm is going to blow up when you get that negative tilt northwest to southeast like that. And then finally, we can see what it does. Boom! We have a deep closed 500 low, in case you can't see it. Uh, let me highlight it for you right here in the Gulf of Maine. Now, that's why the model is doing that. Here's the problem. This is the winds. And again, this is the GFS model. Look at these howling winds. This I talked about this on the snowstorm page, but again, this is uh, Friday afternoon. The winds here, that dark brown color, in case you can't see this, this dark brown color, that's like 170 knots, over 200 miles an hour. And you can see it here as well. And then even here, the red color is like 130 knots. So these, these winds are really howling. And what it does is it causes the models to have problems figuring out which piece of energy is going to merge with another piece of energy. So you have one model run which says, boom, big snowstorm, big winter storm on the East Coast. And the next model run says, oh, I'm sorry, out to sea. So you're not getting any consistency. This is a very common problem when you have uh, the Pacific fire hose pattern. That's what this is. Very common pattern during the cold season months. Now, look, for example, uh, this is the European model from this morning. As you can see, it's got no big storm. It's going off the coast. Rain, so on and so forth. And also notice that the northern piece of energy here, you can see this a little bit, is a weak low here. And you can see there's a front like this. Okay, this northern piece of energy does not phase with this. Instead, it cuts across it like that and forces it out to sea. And we'll see that in the upper air pattern. So while the this, the GFS, was showing the phase, the European clearly does not. And this is the afternoon uh, European. It's a little bigger storm. It's a little closer to the coast. So you could make a case he might be trending a little bit towards the GFS, but it's still not a very cold situation. 
in terms of the temperatures or any snow on it. And you can see the upper herb pattern here. This is the European map, and you can clearly see, okay, it looks like it's going to phase. So we have our southern piece of energy here. Here's the northern piece of energy diving in. Okay, that's great. That looks good. And then what happens is, okay, now you have a phase. Both streams are merging together. We have this one piece here, and the other piece is there. And then you've got a nice, that's not closed off, but it's a nice piece of energy trough here. The problem is that this is moving constantly. You see how these heights, you see the ridge here is building, you see how it's expanding. Look at the lines here and here. See how they're expanding in this direction? So this is driving the system rapidly off the coast. There's nothing over eastern Canada, no blocking pattern to slow it down, nothing in southeastern Canada. So the system just intensifies, but it slides off the coast. Okay, there you go. And it'd be part of the problem is and you can see this on the European model with more, with a little better, a little, a little better resolution. That's what I'm trying to say is you can see all the disturbances. So there's our southern piece of energy. There's a northern piece of energy. There's another one here, and look, there's another disturbance there. There's another disturbance here. There's little kinks. There's another one over here, and there's this. I mean, it's just boom, 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 boom. And that's because this jet is just howling. Look at the lines here, just screaming into the Pacific Ocean. There's our upper level low, and there's our ridge here. So this thing is all compacted and becomes very intense and very powerful, over 200 miles an hour, easily, 250 miles an hour. This is, uh, and now, okay, so we have two solutions. We have the big storm from early this morning, uh, on this Tuesday morning from the GFS, and now we have the European, which says going off the coast. Okay, let's see what the afternoon GFS does. As you can see, this is the afternoon GFS. It is significantly further to the east, no doubt about it. And then you can see it moving again by Saturday afternoon. It's way off the coast. There's no blizzard in New England at all. This thing is way off the coast. And this is the 18Z GFS, even further off the coast. Looks like the European more and more and more all the time. That's the superiority of the European model, folks. You know, there you go. And if we look at um, the GFS, the difference here is that um, on the 18Z GFS, you remember this northern piece that was supposed to come down? There's the southern piece, right? You remember this was the phase? Look what it does. This northern piece never phases. It goes straight. It goes boom, being pushed this way. It never drops in, never happens. So you can see the huge difference. Let me clear this out for you. This is really impressive to see. Okay, this is the GFS here. I call it up so you can see it. Okay, there's the GFS phasing of the northern branch coming in. See that right here? All right. Now, this is the 18Z uh, GFS. Does not do that at all, which is just what the European was showing. There's too much energy here in the Pacific jet coming in across Canada and this whole area. It's just firing in and it's pushing everything and it's destroying the pattern. Now, uh, this is the European uh, ensemble. Um, and you can see that it does have a low fairly close to the coast here. Now, this is for Saturday morning around 10 a.m., 7 to 10 a.m., and the rain snow line is right here, right along this area here. This implies that the areas from Washington, D.C., northward, uh, Baltimore, Hagerstown, Frederick, uh, the northern end of the Shenandoah Valley, northern Virginia, uh, might see snow out of this. It's very possible Saturday morning it could be cold enough for snow. Let me show you the temperatures here. Uh, this is the, the European Ensemble Saturday morning and the GFS. Uh, Charlottesville is 33 degrees. Much of the valley is 32 degrees or colder. Washington, D.C. is 33 or 34 degrees. Uh, Dulles is 33 degrees. Central Maryland is around 33 degrees. It could be snowing in these areas, especially if the precipitation is coming down hard. So there is a chance for some accumulating snow in western and central Maryland, the eastern third of West Virginia, and much of the Shenandoah Valley from Roanoke northward, um, if this scenario is correct. And this is an enlargement of it. And you can see it here, this is Saturday morning. And again, this is the rain snow line, more or less. Approximately, the rain snow line is here. So that means all this precipitation is all snow, if that's correct. That's DC, that's Baltimore, especially the north side. That's Front Royal and Hagerstown and Frederick and Martinsburg and uh, Stroudsburg and Harrisonburg and maybe Charlottesville, Staunton, all the way down to Roanoke and so on and so forth, Lexington. So maybe that's a possibility. I just want to point that out to you. And uh, we'll be watching that carefully. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, it kind of would match the overall trend. You know, we've had a couple of snows in the Shenandoah Valley already this winter. Now, beyond that, what happens? 
Uh, yeah, the trough comes to the west coast. We get a big ridge over Cuba, and the, we get a warming here on February 4, 5, and 6. But then after that, the pattern begins to change again. Both models show the strong cold front February 5. So here is the uh, GFS and the European. This is the European. You can see the lows right here. There's the cold front. There's the warm front. There's the warm high, bringing up the warm air. Okay, on February uh, 4 and 5. And there's the big cold Arctic high, bringing down the cold air. And this is the uh, GFS. Same sort of idea. Okay, big high here off the coast, bringing up the warm air on February 5. And there's the big Arctic air coming southward. Now, when that front clears the area, and then what happens is it kind of stalls. And this is the European Ensemble. You can, just let me enlarge it for a little bit here, if I can click on it. You can see it's got some sort of wave here with cold temperatures over the mid-Atlantic on February 7th. And this here is the uh, GFS, and you can see what it's doing. The wave develops. There's a second wave with another piece of energy coming in here. Some sort of snow it's trying to hint at in central North Carolina, central and eastern Virginia, up into D.C., Philly, Baltimore, Maryland, southern New Jersey. Is it bullshit? I don't know. It's a possibility. And you can, the reason is because of the upper air pattern that comes in. Look how cold it finally gets. This is, you know, day 10 European ensemble, a massive trough. Uh, and this is the uh, GFS, a massive trough. So this might be our last shot for anything on the East Coast in terms of significant winter weather. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm jinxing here by saying that, but th this would be a nice pattern here for something to happen on the East Coast. It's cold. We'll see. I don't know. Um, it's a possibility. So we'll see what happens next weekend. And as you know, you know, February 7th, 8th, 9th, February 6th, a lot of big snowstorm dates have happened historically on the East Coast during that time, during this, that particular time frame, those particular dates. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll catch you over on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.